The blank has had a tenon turned on the end to fit in my four jaws. Correct sizing of tenon is important to give the maximum grip. You don't want your jaws open much. So I first rough down the size using peel and cuts with my skew. And the calipers gauge the end and I can just size the blank to the maximum and diameter required for this particular finial. If you look at the bottom of your screen you can see the sample finial that I'm having to copy. I generally work on the far end and the smaller sizes. I'm gauging this using a 3mm parting tool. Uh, if using calipers of this description it's always best to round off the points to stop it grabbing. Peeling cuts again, quick way of reducing the timber to the size. A slicing cut there, basically to give a clean cut. These gauges are homemade gauges. You have to turn fairly close to the diameter, just push it on and it gives you the size required. At this stage, I can use a storyboard which I've made to mark out the transitional points. As you can see, there's small nicks in the board, so the pencil will locate in exactly the same place for each one. You can't make an accurate copy if you don't mark the transitional points accurately. See, these are small diameters, again, using one of my homemade gauges, reduce the sizes down, just trim that to length as marked first, again have to get close to the size before pushing the gauge on. So we work on the far end furthest away from the chuck first, basically because if I reduce the sizes near the chuck, when working on the end you'll get a lot more vibration and the chance of it breaking. So now I'll start turning the shape required. On the top this is a tiny bead. So I reduce the sides. and turn the bead. I'm using the toe of the skew here. A very fine bead. As a production turner, you tend to change the tool as little as possible. So these two features I would turn with the skew normally. So I drop on them before swapping my tool. It's here, I cut back because it's a dead straight cut, makes it nice and clean on the end grain. Now got a half inch spindle gouge. Obviously you can't take aggressive cuts at this point because it's quite thin. An aggressive cut will bounce. Again, you must Gently glide the bevel over the surface. This gives the workpiece a little bit of support. This gives you a nice clean cut. As you can see, the actual surface is almost shining. Using the gouge, basically, it will go in the direction of the bevel points. So this is a difficult little section there because you need to get right down to have a clean point by the small bead. Now the actual sample, this isn't quite symmetrical. So keeping my eye on the sample and watching the top of the piece so I can get the correct profile. And now move down nearer the jaws. 
This is the shoulder at the back. Again, using my gauges, I turn to the smallest diameter. Using a parting tool. And then I reduce the, the shoulder bead. Again, using calipers. I haven't got a gauge this size, so I'll just use calipers. Alright, trim that quirt up clean because there's a slight burr due to using a parting tool and a rough edge. Again, back with the spindle gouge. This is rather an unusual profile just here. It's not a normal type sweep. So again, have to be careful to make sure I get the right shape. visualize the shape all the time yeah, quick glance over and I realize this isn't quite the same shape as required so revisiting it is a little bit risky but as it's only a tiny touch I'll be okay now I could stand up now and turn the peg on the end afterwards But being fairly experienced, I know I can sand it by finger supporting it. This is quite a tiny peg as a sample to get in the holes in the clock. And just check that size. Right, next, we're going to check it. So just compare it with a sample. And that looks pretty close. Perfectly adequate. When you're happy with what you've got, obviously I can now sand it up. As I said, because I've turned that tiny peg on the end, there'll be a little bit of bounce. So on the very end, I will support it. The 240, oh, forgot the extraction. The 240 sandpaper. This is quite a old, bit of reclaimed mahogany. So it's very dry. As you can see, it's supporting the piece. So putting pressure on the sandpaper won't break it. Be very careful when sanding not to take the sharp crisps details off. It's the beauty of hand wood turning, it's got lovely crisp detail. As you can see it's extremely dusty mahogany as it's probably a hundred years old. I believe it's an old table leg that was cut up. Happy with it. Cut the shoulder back so it sits properly. And then turn off with the skip. 